Welcome to Spintertainment. My name is Eric Landis, and uh, I am excited to lead you along this steady state workout. Now, this particular workout is unique because the on-screen graphics that you see depict the uh, the speed that we'll be pedaling, not the actual uh, intensity itself. Thank you to our sponsors. We couldn't make these videos without a little bit of help from some uh, kind folks. Make sure and go check them out. <laughs> so today's ride is out at Mary's Loop, which is uh, just outside of Fruta, Colorado. We've got two riders on screen, Anne and Sarah. We'll be using our heads-up display right now. We're just pedaling lightly at a level three. The display shows you how long we're gonna be in this position. The uh, speed that we're pedaling. That's our total time bar at the bottom. We'll change colors so you know how far along we are through the ride. And then all the details on what's coming up next. Now that's important because I'm a believer in kind of having your expectations uh, managed so you can you can know how much power to put out coming up in the next set. Speaking of power, we're working on a 1 to 10 perceived exertion. So this is not the gear on your bike. This is level 10's full sprint, level 1's full recovery, level 5 is threshold, like an all day tempo. We're working on our warm up here. Now we're just pedaling slowly at this level 3. We're actually going to shift down to an easier gear and go to a double time pedal. So we're going to go to 120. So I'm going to shift down. Pedal up super fast. Now this this uh, speed will be difficult for a lot of people. This will be uncomfortable. But again, you're kind of just pedaling through air at this point. You're geared that far down. And this is designed to just get your endorphins to kick in, get your body warmed up. We're getting close. When we come out of this, we're going to slow back down, but we're going to add a little bit of resistance. I'm a big believer in warm-up. Through my racing career, I learned the hard way how important warm-up is and how I felt better and enjoyed myself more with proper warm-up. And whether I'm racing or not, anytime I'm exercising, I like to get a nice warm-up in first. So we're almost there. Five, four, three, two. One, all right, back down. So we're going slower here. Now I'm actually adding resistance. Kind of just adjusting my resistance until I feel comfortable with my speed. Now if you don't have uh, pedal cadence feedback, all of our music soundtracks are custom made, so you can pedal right to the music and you'll be on tempo. side. It's a nice steady grade. It's not too rough through this section. You can see some rocks and debris on the edges, but for the most part, the trail is pretty smooth. All right, we're getting ready for another double time. So once again, I'm going to shift down to an easier gear, so I'm kind of just pedaling through air. I'm just going to pedal with lots of speed and intensity, coming up in three, two, one, and down. So 
down in resistance, up in speed. When I'm finding the beat, I like to focus on my weak leg or my left leg. actually a trail right below them called Rustler's Loop. It's a beginner's trail. It's a couple miles long, really mellow. Uh, it's a popular place for families to take kids. All right, we're gonna slow it down in four, three, two, one, and down. Okay, now this time, it's more of a recovery. So I'm, I'm actually taking, I'm leaving my resistance down, so I'm kind of pedaling through air but I am just getting my breathing and my legs kind of back under control. So I know some of you might be saying, well, I'm not tired, I don't need a recovery right now. Well, that's okay. This isn't about really working or, or feeling a burn at this early in the phase. This is, uh, it's just warm up. So this is the final recovery. So right now, you've been going, you've got your blood flowing. Uh, I would expect that you don't have a sweat worked up quite yet, but it won't take long from here on out. Now when we go into this work zone, this is a cross country video, so there's not a lot of recovery. We're gonna be working for long sets. This is going to work, uh, you know, for your endurance energy system. Uh, I, I spend a lot of time working on intervals and developing strength and power, but there is a need to just sit and spin sometimes. So this is a, a fixed gear, so we're going to go to a level 6, that's just above threshold. So if level 5 is you working hard, but you can stay there, we'll just call it all day, level 6 is a little bit above that. We're going to vary our speed to uh, alter the workout. So if we need to recover, we're going to slow down, if we need to add wattage, we're going to speed up, but we're not going to touch the gear. Now of course, if you need to make adjustments through the workout, uh, you know, feel free, but we're going to try to stay at one single gear through this entire workout. Alright, so we're going to make this change. We're going to our level 6 for 8 minutes. section here. As other riders were out uh, doing their own ride, they heard that some riders were going to be doing this, so they stopped to see the spectacle of two girls with no knee pads riding this section. Alright, so that's the horse thief bench. This is an option coming off of marriage loop. So the horse thief bench is a, a lollipop loop where we go out and back and then we exit back up that same little uh, traverse that we just came down. Still pedaling along, putting out quite a bit of power here. Again, this level six is not enough to really make me stop or, or, or uh, blow me out with my cardio or my legs. But I'm definitely working very hard. The girls are kind of going up and down, following along the base of that cliff edge that we just got done riding up. heading down towards the Colorado River, kind of undulating up and down. They're down into some sandy sections here. The dirt underneath the tires is going to be soft and loose. 
It's not quite like beach sand, but if it rains, it doesn't really get muddy either. This trail is really good when it rains. Or in the winter when there's snow on the, on the ground, this is a popular trail to go ride because it holds up really well with the moisture and water being on the ground. You can see that if you get into the edges of the, of the trail, it gets soft, where it might just kind of swallow your tires up like quickstand. I'm just pedaling to the beat, kicking my legs over. Continue to put 
put out power, lean the bike, keep it on the trail. We're less than a minute from making a change here. As I'm pedaling on these long fixed sets, I get tired and I, I get kind of emotionally weak. I like to focus on thinking about forward momentum. Of course, the harder I push, the faster I pedal, or as I gear up, I'll begin to go faster forward. So I think about putting tension on the chain and how far forward can I get the bike rolling with each pedal stroke. We've got a change coming up. We're not changing gear. We're just going to up our pedal speed to 100 RPM. Pay attention to the song change. Here we go. Two, go. one. All right. All right, so we were working hard before. Now we're at a level that's going to make you start to pant immediately. This 100 RPM is going to be uncomfortably fast for some of you. Some of you, you racers, should be familiar with this this feeling. As you pedal faster in the same gear, you'll literally just be putting out more wattage, more power, more speed. Now at the end of this, we're going to have a recovery. We're not going to change gears. We're not going to back off. We're just going to slow our pedal down to a 50 RPM. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo. Okay, so I'm still putting out power. Slow to a 50. 50 is going to be really slow. You'll be doing less wattage, less power here. So, uh, the particular bike I'm using today, it's got RPM and wattage feedback. If you've got a smart trainer or a spin bike that gives you all that, that's great. If you don't, I'm just kind of sharing what it could feel like. So again, it feels uh, difficult to turn the cranks over, but because I'm pedaling slower, my heart rate, my breathing is going to come down. The girls just got done coming through uh, Dead Horse Canyon. And now they're headed back uphill. So we got to a low point on this Horse Thief Bench Loop. We're going back uphill now. On this recovery, what I'm wanting is a full recovery. Like I want your legs to feel fresh. I want your, your heart rate and your breathing to be down. In through the nose, out through the mouth. This is a good spot to get a drink if you need it. getting ready to go again. Now we're going to go back into the same series. We're going to go for seven minutes this time, but it's going to be faster. So last time we did eight minutes at an 80. Now we're going to seven minutes at a 90. All right. Get that speed up. Now this 90, this is a little bit more of what I call a race pace.
lighters a couple tries to get that on camera, but they made it look good. Now you can see they just came up out of that ravine, now they're up on the edge, turned to 180, headed back the other direction. Training. I train so that I can be fast if I've got a race. What I've got coming up ahead of me is a uh, trip to the lake. So, in our neighboring state over in Utah, there's a, a Lake Powell. It's a gigantic lake. When you go there, it kind of feels like being in the ocean. It might be more fun than being in the ocean. So we're going to be out of the lake, and uh, my goal is to be fitter than my friends, right? So I've got to have that, you know, be comfortable taking my shirt off, surfing, wakeboarding, laying out. Now I'm a redhead, so I'm kind of afraid of the sun. I, uh, I don't really get along with the sun. I have a, a lot of respect for it. I'm that guy. I'll wear like a big brimmed hat long sleeve shirt sometimes, but not always, I'm going to take my shirt off and look okay in front of other humans, oh man, that's scary, so right now, it's like in my training, you know, I'm a pretty motivated person, and I exercise quite often, but I still find it challenging, and so I have to play tricks with myself. Some of the tricks you see laid out in the heads-up display here, which is focusing on power, wattage, pedal speed. I like to keep an eye on my heart rate. And when I race all of these numbers and use all this data, it helps keep me honest. So if I just pay attention to how my body felt, like right now, it hurts, right? Like this is hard. So if I just pay attention to my body, I'd probably slow down a little bit. But when I got a bike with a real power meter on it, I noticed that when I slowed down, my wattage dropped. I used to think, all right, so like, right now I'm slowing down. I used to think, well, I'm pedaling hard. I'm in a hard gear, putting out a lot of power. It's, it's not as true as you'd like to think. When you pedal back up to speed, you're doing way more wattage. focused on not slowing down. I worked way harder, deeper into the red zone. I had to motivate myself. So all the little statistics, if you hit goals and stay there, it'll motivate you to push harder and farther. And you really won't even miss it. You won't even notice. Because your body can do it. Your body can do amazing things. Now as I'm training, I don't tend to just train for the fun of it. I mean, for the fun of it, I'd rather sit on the couch and eat chips, and drink beers. But that can't be what life's about. There's more to it. Feeling strong, being athletic, looking good. Being healthy so you live a long, fulfilled life. Being able to keep up with your kids or grandkids. There's so many reasons to stay fit. So each day, I wake up and I think, all right, what's most urgent? What do I need to do to have fun and feel good this week or next week? And that keeps me motivated to keep going. As I've gotten older and my kids have grown up, I don't race as much as I used to, so that motivation is getting less. I'm having to find other things. All right, minute 30 to go at the same resistance. to a somewhat frantic 110, 110 RPM, it's only for a minute, that's what I'm going to do right now, I'm trying to lower my heart rate on purpose, I'm not going to slow down, I'm not going to change my gear, I'm just going to focus on relaxing, relax my shoulders down the back, relax my hands, keep my weight centered over my feet, Breaths in through the mouth. 
mass speed, trying to recover without slowing down. I've got sweat dripping off my eyebrows now. Okay, getting ready. 20 seconds left. Gotta to tough it out and push hard. shorter sets. So now, feeling recovered, heart rate's dropped, my breathing's under control, my sweating has slowed a little bit. Here we go to 100 for six minutes. Two, one, and go. and exit. 
supported from Denver to Durango and uh, when you're carrying all your backpacking gear which is pretty light these days but let's just say it's still 30 or 40 pounds of extra gear on your bike or on your back you can't make all the climbs and so hiking especially when you're at 13,000 feet is a big part of it Because you have wheels doesn't mean you always get to use them. My favorite part about bike packing is the downhills, of course. As you're pushing your bike uphill, you're basically hiking, so you're going as fast as a backpack hiker would. Then you get to the downhills and you take all that weight and wheels and really put them to use. Gear down. 
Pedal into the air. Woo. This workout was inspired by my coach. He had me go out and just do grinding. Now a lot of times when I do this type of work, I do it on the road. I don't do it on mountain bike trails. Mountain bike trails tend to be too dynamic, too many uphills and downhills to settle into a pace. Now this pace that we're doing isn't just for power, or just muscles or cardio. Some of it is neuromuscular control. So it's, it's getting comfortable at these high RPMs, learning to pedal quickly, efficiently. It's similar to having balance. Having balance is not natural. Having balance is practice. You make your muscles stronger that, that keep your balance and keep you stable. And it's, it's almost more in your head than it is in the muscles. So these fixed gear rides have to do with being strong, pushing that power constantly, and learning that when you adjust your pedal speed that your wattage changes, your power changes, and the demands on your body change. This will come in useful out in the real world. Sometimes you're gonna be carrying a heavy load and you'll only be able to step slowly. Some days you'll have a light load, you'll be able to step quickly. All right, four minute recovery here. Once again, the goal is full recovery. I want you to feel fresh going into this next set. Now the next set is standing. So we're gonna choose a gear that you feel good with standing. We're gonna pedal a little bit more slowly. So this first interval is gonna be a standing level eight but only a 60 RPM, which is nice and slow. The girls are pedaling through some boulders here. These boulders are reaching out, trying to grab the end of the handlebars or your pedals. You've got to stand up and put some body English in and work their way through. good. I feel like I'm ready to put power out again. I'm thankful for this last minute. I'm just going to stand and drop my heels. Stick my butt back, fold at the hips. I can actually feel the pull in my front hamstring just a little bit. Big deep breaths. These intervals are all shorter. This is going to be a four minute standing with a sprint at the end. They're going to keep getting more intense with faster pedaling. With shorter intervals, you can do it. RPM should feel pretty easy, pretty comfortable. You want to have enough resistance on the bike that you can put all your weight on that front foot, de weight your back foot all together. It's like suspension damping. that front pedal. You would have enough resistance that you can trust it to hold your weight up and slowly let you down. Once again, I'm focusing on keeping my knees and feet width apart. It's pretty easy to let your knees cave in like this. You see a lot of riders ride like this. One of the reasons why you don't want to have your knees in, besides using all of your quad muscles, is Stability, keeping your balance. So when you're wide, it, uh, it 
helps you stay online. You don't get knocked over as easily. You don't lose your balance as easily. It's especially important for mountain bikers where aerodynamics is less important and bike handling is more important. Dealing with the loose dirt, slippery, uneven traction, Base. 
it's got quite a bit of traction and it rolls really fast right here. But if you get out of that little ribbon, it gets uh, loose, really uh, marbly on the edges quickly. All right, here we go. Standing up a little faster this time. Three minutes of 70 RPM. Two, one, and up. All right, I like these 70s. 70 standing is a really natural pedal stroke for me. It's uh, not too hard from a coordination standpoint. This is not difficult for me to maintain. When we follow these rim edges, the climbs are not very steep. See the girls are carrying lots of speed here. It's uh, probably slightly downhill. We'll be heading toward towards the drainage and the desert. We don't have too many creeks. We kind of just have flash floods. So we're kind of headed downhill to a drainage where water would flush out when it rains. Once we cross the drainage, we got to lower the gear start gradually heading back uphill away from it towards the next one. Set. 
So standing slow, standing fast. We keep getting shorter. We're down to two minutes. At the 80 RPM. I'm trying to recover here while I'm grinding out this 50 RPM. I'm gonna go into that two minute standing with my heart rate as low as possible. The lower you start, the longer you can last. seconds left. All right, here we go. Standing at level 80, or RPM 80, level 8. Two, one. Oh man, moving up to standing position felt good after that sitting grind. You can see our riders are on screen having to stand up, muscle up a steep climb. We're almost to the top. Here comes Ann for the pass. It's in the middle of the fall right now. Air temperature is cool. Maybe 50 or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The sun is setting in the west behind us. Feels good to get out in the crisp air after being out in the heat of the summer. Less than a minute. Stay with it. It's getting hard. It's hard to keep this beat. All right, big panic breath. Let it go. All the way in, all the way out. Get that chin up, open up your airway. 30 seconds. seconds. Okay, we're gonna finish for the sprint. 10 seconds to go. Get that speed up. Get ready. Two, one, go! Standing sprint, 100 RPM. Standing is really hard. Oh man, that was intense. When we engineer these workouts, I'm literally thinking, make the workout impossible. Make the goals so lofty that they're almost unattainable. That standing 100, is almost unattainable. Breathe in. Breathe out. With uh, with regular sit and spin classes, in. I used to spin all winter long at my local Breathe gym, and I'd come out. out in the spring, and I felt weak. I'm like, what am I doing in spin class? Why does it hurt so bad? Like, it hurts, it's just I'm sweating, it feels like I'm working really hard. But then I go outside, and I ride against real gravity, and I feel weak. And that's when I realized that to go into the red zone, 
using an indoor environment where you don't have wind, you don't have gravity to push you, and wind to cool you down. It's hard to go into the red zone. It's hard to really make a difference to your body. Gain strength, add cardio. So when these videos get to the end and it feels impossible to you, it is impossible. It's supposed to be impossible. And as you get stronger and you get fitter, I expect you to be in a higher gear. And when you get to that section in the video, I still expect it to be impossible. Because they say as you get fitter, it doesn't get any easier. You're just stronger. Still hurts the same. But what I like is when I'm out in the real world with my friends, hanging out with my kids, I'm strong enough, I've got the conditioning to enjoy my life, to have fun, and not be held back on my fitness or lack of flexibility, whatever your weakness is. You've got to push deep into the red zone in your training. Now, I don't want you to get hurt, so don't, uh, don't kill yourself. But do push yourself. On this cool down, I would like to just stop pedaling and lay down and take a nap. But I shifted into first gear. I've got no resistance. I'm just pedaling lightly, trying to keep my blood flowing, letting the lactic acid flush out. At the end of a uh, workout, I always recommend to cool down as long as is reasonable. We. Uh, we don't really have enough time in these one hour videos to cool down as long as you should. So I encourage you to keep spinning along a little longer, step off, do some stretching, stretch all your major leg muscles, maybe your arms, upper back, shoulders. You can see the, the girls here running away from that setting sun. Nice golden light, just a few minutes before the sun drops behind the horizon. There's this one last climb. This climb kind of marks the end of the Mary's Loop Trail. We're not completely back to the parking lot yet. This is a long trail. It's, uh, it's too long to, to fit the ride back to the parking lot. The ride back to the parking lot is just a simple dirt road. But once you get to this cattle guard at the top of the hill here, kind of marks the end of the ride. There is another trail that peels off to the right called More Fun. And More Fun is, is kind of a local's funny name because it's, it's something like a double black diamond of, uh, of high technical rocky terrain. There we go, across the cattle guard, back down into the valley, headed home. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. I really had a good time. There's several different workouts that go along with the same video. Check out the Power Cross Country Trail. Uh, the authentic, the authentic workout of this one is fantastic. Thank you so much to our sponsors. Oh, I'm Eric Landis. Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Have a great day. Remember, spinning sucks without us.